Hi guys, welcome to my channel Indo Mariner. It's all about Merchant Navy. I am a deck cadet in a ship management company. So, how did I reach this rank? Like everyone, after my 10th, I was also confused in choosing a stream for my 11th standard. Finally, I ended up in science so that I could deviate into any career. Till now and forever, I'll be happy with that opinion. That is one of the main criteria for joining Merchant Navy. So in this video, I'll discuss how did I reach this rank. In the midway of my 12th standard, I decided upon Merchant Navy as my profession. Like you guys, I also browsed about this career on how to join, what are the procedures that you should follow. Actually, when I introduced this career option to my parents, they gave me full support for choosing this career. After that, they also started collecting information among their friends and family. With my mom, you can say that I researched about this career option because I'm their hope and they blindly can't send their child to any profession. We collected information about this job. Finally, we ended up in three main guidelines because there were so many people who are exploiting the lack of knowledge about Merchant Navy. So let's see the first guideline. First guideline was the college should be one of the best in India. It was a long list. So we narrowed it with the second guideline. So the second guideline was it should be approved by DG Shipping and should be an IMU affiliated institute. So what is DG Shipping? DG Shipping is the Directorate General of Shipping, an attached office of the Ministry of Shipping under the Government of India and deals with matters concerning maritime administration, maritime education and training, development of shipping industry and other related subjects. I have put the link for the training institutes approved by the DG Shipping in the description box. Please take a note of that. So the next is IMU. So what is IMU? IMU is Indian Maritime University which conducts the board exam. IMU is a central university in India which deals with a wide range of topics related to sea, ranging from oceanography to maritime law and history, and also includes practical topics such as search and rescue at sea and the transportation of dangerous goods. I have put that list of IMU affiliated institutes in the description box. With this, you will have a clear picture of the training institutes that you should consider, so you can choose the best among that. Finally, the third guideline. I told you all that this is a job oriented course. So the third guideline was of course the job. After your studies, the next main thing is the job, right? That is the main advantage of this career. So who will provide you the job? I filtered and kept on going until I selected Anglo Eastern Maritime Academy. But it's my selection. Now I need to get the sponsorship of this company. The ship management company runs the college. So it was an advantage for me. I don't have to go out and searching for a sponsor. But to get into one of the best ship management company in the world, I had to raise my standards. I researched about Anglo and found they have very good placement records. They manage more than 600 ships. If I could get an admission in Anglo, it will be my turning point. So I found that they have an entrance exam. The syllabus was there in their website. It consisted of the following English, Mathematics, Physics, Chemistry, General Knowledge, Aptitude with Different Reasoning. I downloaded, referred and refreshed the topics. It was a plus 2 level exam and I was confident that I can get a good result in that. The exam was at an internet center in Cochin. I went for it with my mom and I was very happy that I could get a good result. The next stage was the interview for getting the admission. But did I told you about the course? DNS, yes. DNS is Diploma in Nautical Science leading to BSc in Applied Nautical Science. After one year of academics in AMA, you have to complete 18 months of CTAM as deck cadet on board ships. This time is very crucial for your career. If you don't complete your CTAM, you can't appear for the second mate's exam. Before joining colleges for doing DNS, ensure you have sponsorship. Otherwise, after your academics, you will be trapped. Then, you might have to search for some agents and it will cost you a great amount of money. This is why many guys will be saying do not join Merchant Navy. At their time, they didn't choose the right college. 
you have to be wise for this. Select the right college wisely. I am here to guide you on that. If you are an Anglo, you don't have to worry about the seat time. They will put you on board ship after successfully completing the two semesters. DNS is the course which I completed from AMA. You should have a clear picture about the course. One year you will be in AMA which consists of two semesters of six months duration each. You have IMU board exam at the end of each semester. Further, their next three semesters that is semester 3, 4, 5 of 18 months on board ships. For semester 6, cadets have to appear for second mate's foreign going exam conducted by Mercantile Marine Department MMD. After passing second mate's examination and IMU semester examinations, IMU issues you the degree certificate of BSc in Applied Nautical Science. So finalizing the qualification required for DNS. If you are after 12th standard, senior school certificate or class 2 or 10 plus 2 from a recognized board or university with physics, chemistry and mathematics with not less than 65% marks in PCM. If you are a graduate, BSc in Physics, Max, Chemistry or Electronics with Physics as individual subject in one of the year with an average of not less than 60% marks in the final year from a recognized university provided you must have passed 10 plus 2 examination with physics, chemistry and mathematics from a recognized board or B.Tech degree with average of not less than 60% in the final year. You should have obtained not less than 60% marks in English, either 10th or 12th or in degree course. Age limit. Minimum age should be 17 years and maximum is 25 years on the date of commencement of the course usually commences either on 1st February or 1st August Physical and Medical Standards You should be physically fit and should meet the medical requirements as specified in DG Shipping Guidelines I have provided the link in the description box About the interview How you have to prepare for the interview Preparations was only based on my personal experience. The main question is how you should dress for the interview. Of course, you have to wear formals with tie. So, formals include full sleeve shirt with collar button on prefer light colors. Mine was a light blue shirt, so better to wear colors like white blue. It should be pleasant and appealing. Now about the trousers or pants. Prefer black, the most common color or you can also go for cream color trousers. Don't make it too skinny. Prefer only formal pants and never wear jeans. Now about the tie. If you're wearing black pants and light blue or white color shirt, prefer a plain black tie. Ensure the tie is long enough that the tip of it should hit at or just above your trouser waistband and the pointed edge should hang no further than the middle of your belt buckle. It's the universal standard. Follow this. When you're choosing the belt, ensure it matches with the formal shoes that you wear. It will be more better if you could have the strap of your watch matching. Just go for black. Now with the face, best to be clean shaved. Dress your hair well. Don't cut your hair too small. It will be awkward if you are overdoing. Have a smart haircut. I think that will be enough for the attire. Now the next question. In which language you have to speak? Of course English. Ensure you speak English well. Be prepared and improve your communication skills before the interview. Now, questions you can expect. You have to brush up your physics, chemistry laws and principles like buoyancy principle, gas laws, Newton's three laws of motion, Max equations and some questions like how does a ship float? Have a clear picture on what you say. Don't be vague. You can have some basic questions like why do you choose Merchant Navy as your career? Majority of the guys will say adventurous life. I'm not generalizing, but for majority, it's not true. High salary and a secure job, very responsible job in a young age. There are guys who don't prefer 9 to 5 jobs. These are few reasons that I think which drags people into this career. Some guys will even say 
they don't want to study much but you have a lot to study if you want to be an officer later on a captain of a ship or a chief engineer mainly to be an officer you have to update every now and then don't ever think you don't have to study anything majority of what you study is what you apply practical stuffs there will be cases like some guys who are very passionate about sea guys who really want to know the sea but they are very less then some questions like who influenced you to join this career how do you know about this career these are all personal questions it varies upon person to person like for me i knew about anglo after searching on internet be honest that will help you a lot if you don't know the answer say i don't know and i'll find it out never bluff upon any answers that you have as per my experience they value honesty have a ready made answer upon describe your family and all research about this career various organization about the company and all next how you should behave in interview always be pleasant don't feel stressed be relaxed give a firm and confident answer put a smile on your face and never forget to reach on time be punctual for the interview search on social media so on how to face the interview build a confidence in you all the best guys for the interview my interview experience interview was at mumbai i have never been there my mom has a friend in mumbai madhu uncle he runs an e branding company in mumbai he was there in the airport for receiving me i stayed in his home with his family he is the one who gave me full support because he knew that it was my first time without my family he was my guardian and i felt he was my family i was a little tensed it's going to be my first official interview in my life but keep in mind you have to be a little tensed so you will take it seriously first day was the interview took time in the traffic to reach from mira road to andheri west in the busiest mumbai traffic there were so many guys in the launch one ma'am came and gave some forms to fill i filled and gave it back to her after some times she called me for the interview i went inside i only remember a few questions but as i remember interview questions was more about why did you choose merchant navy as your profession what all attracted you to this career and why did i choose anglo and why this course and all they also asked to describe my family he asked some more questions and i hope i answered it correctly afterwards i submitted the certificates that i gained in different activities like i was there in the boy scout and those science fest that i went he told me that i cleared the first phase i was very happy they asked me to wait for the second interview with the captain second phase was after lunch he was very cool and asked some science based questions to see my intellectual level and to know how good i was in science and he also asked some more questions i hope i gave the answers correctly and whichever questions i didn't know i said i don't know always keep in mind be honest never bluff in the interview after that session i waited outside in the launch finally a ma'am came and told me that go for the medicals tomorrow that means i'm selected and i was very happy upon hearing this i informed madhu uncle about this he was waiting in the reception he spent his whole day for me in his busy work schedule i'm always thankful to him and his family i called my mom and said i got selected she was very happy later on my dad called me he was also very happy my whole family was very happy next step was the medical test on the next day you should be physically fit and should meet the medical requirements as specified in dg shipping guidelines i'll explain you the medical test conducted after the sponsorship interview ensure the following is fine for you structure 
there should be no evidence of weak structure by way of imperfect development of muscles or serious defect. Weight below 42 kg and height below 150 cm will be rejected. The chest should be well developed with a minimum range of expansion of 5 cm. For female applicants, weight below 39 kg and height below 145 cm will be rejected. Weight to be proportionate to height and age. Skeletal system. There should be no disease or impairment of functions of bones or joints, contracture or of deformity of chest or any joint, abnormal curvature of spine, deformity of feet like bow legs, knock knees, flat feet, deformity of upper limbs, deformity of the head, deformity from fractures or depression of the skull, deformity or uneven bending of the spinal column, fractures healed with a pin inside will be a disqualification. Ear, nose and throat. There should be no impaired hearing, discharge or disease in either ear, unhealed, perforation of the tympanic membrane or signs of acute or chronic separative otitis media or evidence of radical mastoid operation, evidence of disease of the bones and cartilage of the nose, nasal polypus or disease of nasopharynx or accessory sinuses, loss or decay of teeth to such an extent as to interfere with efficient chewing, no disease of the throat, palate, tonsils or gums or any disease or injury affecting the normal function of either temporomandibular joint. Individuals with severe pyorrhea are to be rejected. The unaided average threshold at least 30 dB in the better ear and an average of 40 dB in the other within frequencies 500, 1000, 2000 and 3000 Hz and a whisper from a distance of not less than 5 meters can be heard. Speech There should be no impairment of speech, example, stammering. Lymphatic system There should be no enlarged glands, tubercular or due to other disease in the neck or other parts of the body. Thyroid gland should be normal. Cardiovascular system There should be no sign of functional or valvular or other disease of the heart and blood vessels. An electrocardiogram should be within normal limits. Systolic blood pressure should not exceed 150 mm nor diastolic above 90 mm. Respiratory system. There should be no evidence of chronic or respiratory tract disease. Pulmonary tuberculosis or previous history of this disease or any chronic disease of the lungs. X-ray of the chest should be normal. The resting respiratory rate should be below 20 per minute and the holding time should not be less than 30 seconds. Digestive system. There should be no evidence of any disease of the digestive system and that liver and spleen should not be palpable and there should be no abdominal tenderness on palpation. Genito-urinary system. There should be no palpable and enlarged kidneys. There should not be any disease of kidneys. Cases showing albuminuria, glycosuria or blood RBC in urine will be rejected. There should be no hernia. Those who have been operated for hernia may be declared fit provided a one year has elapsed after the operation. Documentary proof to be produced by the candidate. B. General tone of abdominal muscles should be good. C. There has been no recurrence of hernia or complications with the operation. Skin. There should be no skin disease unless temporary or trivial. Nervous system. There should be no history or evidence of mental disease of the candidate Candidates having a history of fits will not be accepted. Mental or nervous irritability, abnormality of gait, defective functions of
cranial nerves. In coordination, motor or sensory defaults will be rejected. Eyesight, the most important point. There should not be any degree of squint or any morbid condition of eyes or of the eyelids that is liable to aggravate or recur. Candidates must possess good binocular vision. Movement of the eyeballs must be full in all directions and the pupils should react normally to light. Defective color vision tested by Ishihara color blindness test is a disqualification. Oral health, the acceptance or rejection on account of loss or decay of teeth depends upon the relative position of the sound teeth. A sufficient number of teeth must be present for efficient chewing. Musculoskeletal system, there should be no defect of the musculoskeletal system that could interfere with the discharge of their duties. Means muscular power, balance, mobility and coordination should be unimpaired. Limb prosthesis would not be acceptable. Mandatory clinical test, other than physical observation, various number of clinical tests are carried out to make sure that all the standards are met number one complete blood count number two routine urine three blood sugar four audiometry five vision test includes distant near and color extra of chest and electrocardiogram friends you can get easily cleared for the medicals if you are all fine in these all the best for your medical test my first day at the ama campus how was my joining in the college my mom and my uncle was there with me. Flight was at the right time, but through the traffic, we reached the campus in the noon time only. When I reached Karjat, we missed the bus for the campus. After that, we took a rickshaw and proceeded. Campus had a huge wall around it. The entrance of the campus was little different, huge. Campus is settled in the beautiful valley along the banks of Pullas River and surrounded by the Sahyadri hill ranges. At the entrance gate, there were some cadets. I gave the company letter and the ID. They gave me a slip mentioning my hostel number, room number and my roommate. And they said you cannot keep smartphones with you and have to use basic keypad phone. I had that Dabba phone, the keypad phone and my smartphone was kept at the entrance gate. And they told my mom to collect it when she is returning back. A year without smartphone, at least six months. That is the semester break. We went to the auditorium as informed by them. The campus is all green and was pleasing. Firstly, they asked whether we took the lunch. As our reply was negative, they asked to take it from the mess. Felt happy with that hospitality. It was a huge mess. After taking lunch, we went for the admission procedures. Faculty members verified and collected the necessary documents and certificates. I saw some group discussions, more like conversations was being conducted and headed by the captains. Later on, I came to know these captains are our teachers. There were a couple of groups. I and my mom joined one group. Captain briefed about the academy, about the smartphone restrictions and all. So instead of smartphones, there was a net lab, a place for using social media for some particular time. And he sorted out the doubts that each and every parents had. After that discussion, they asked to collect the linen and uniform from the store and informed to proceed to hostel. Then I went to the hostel. My room was on the ground floor and I was happy that my roommate was a care light. A great relief for my mom and I could meet many guys from my state who became my besties later on. New world but new friends for lifetime. After that, my mom and my uncle went back. Of course, I was not happy. For the next six months, I won't be able to meet them. Goodbyes are always painful. But this is for my future, my family's future, and I have to be strong. Took the dinner and had muster at 2015. I'll explain the muster and all in my upcoming videos. In the muster, they explain the daily routine and the guidelines that should be strictly followed. But on that day, I was missing my sweet home, my family, and my room. But the sad thing was, I couldn't call my mom. I had a BSNL SIM and there were no signal for BSNL connection. Some struggling few days, some struggling initial days. 
Of course, they were trying to simulate the experience at sea, setting the standards for the next generation officers started from that day. One day at Ema, the day starts at morning 6 o'clock with the muster. Outside the hostel, wherever you go, you have to wear the shoes. Sports shoes and formal shoes are provided by the authorities. Personal safety is the paramount, not only in the academy but also on board ships. Muster is similar to assembly that we had in the schools, but a headcount of the cadets who came for the muster will be taken and the same will be reported to the cadet captain, CC, and whoever missing should be accounted like someone might have hostel duties, some cadet might be in the gym duty and some will be there in the bridge. What is bridge? Not this one, it is the command center of the ships. Similar to the bridge that we have on board ships, we have one in the AMA through which we could experience the duties that are required to be performed. So the muster is to ensure everyone is present. On board ships, we muster for emergency to ensure headcount is taken and everyone is accounted so that we don't miss anyone in any situation. In the 6 o'clock muster, some cleaning duties will be assigned for the cadets around the campus. After the clean ship, the cadet captain ensures that the area which we cleaned is up to the mark. Some divisions might have gym at that time, so those guys can proceed for the gym. Our batch consisted of 160 cadets, started from 17th July 2017 and we were divided into 4 divisions. So for the gym, according to the timetable, divisions are allotted. After that, we can head for the breakfast in uniform. In the meantime, daily basic needs can be done. You should be well shaved always. And for the haircut, Papu Baya will come as necessary. By 7.30, we can go for the breakfast. Breakfast ranges from the Idli Sambar to the Puri Bhaji. It varies from day to day. We have another muster with National Anthem at 08. 3 zero hours. Notices and any changes or special announcement will be made in the muster. After that, we'll be proceeding to the classrooms in the academic block and seamanship labs or workshop as per the timetable. Some divisions may have seamanship lab in the morning and for that they have to wear coveralls or boiler suit, the name that we like more, with safety helmet, safety shoes, safety goggles and safety gloves. For the academic classes, the normal uniform that is the white half sleeve shirt with epaulets and black trousers with formal shoes provided from the academy. Classes starts from 9 o'clock, a tea break is provided at 11 o'clock and other two periods after that. At noon time, around 1300, we can have the lunch. In the lunch, we have the continental to the chicken biryani on Saturdays. For those veggies, we have vegetarian along with the non-veg that we have like vegetable biryani and karai paneer and all. Then at 1400, afternoon classes resumes and will be there until 1700. Some divisions may have seamanship lab or workshop at this time. If there is a seamanship or workshop, it means it is for half a day. It is conducted as per timetable. That is, if we have seamanship or workshop in the morning, afternoon will be having regular classes and if you are having the classes in the academic block in the morning we will have seamanship or workshop in the afternoon it is not same for every day it is all as per timetable weekly we have one seamanship lab or workshop lab physics lab is also the for the first semesters in the evening tea will be served with snacks in the mess room and it is time for those who want to pursue their favorite sports or there might be swimming classes in the evening or some workout in the gym. Always remember every activity goes in a systematic way. After 1800 dinner will be commenced and for dinner we have from the Chinese noodles to the tanturi chicken. Food served is of mixed kissing type and varies every day. The above mentioned food will not be provided every day of the week. At 2015, we have another muster to end up the day. After the muster, the anchorage kiosk will be open and we can buy some eatable snacks, stationery and personal toiletry items which will serve the daily needs for cash purchase. Studies can be done after the muster or every possible time which is very important as part of the academics. There might be some homework, hostel work for the next day. 
lights off at 10 o'clock. That means proper rest should be also taken. So you'll be fresh and vigilant for the next day. DNS course and what happened in my course time? DNS is for one year, which is the first two semesters in the degree BSc in Applied Nautical Science. The following are the subjects you will have in the first semester. Applied Mathematics, Applied Sciences, Ship Construction and Ship Stability Part 1, Navigation Part 1, Terrestrial and Celestial, Navigation Part 2, Bridge Equipment, Watch Keeping and Meteorology, Cargo Handling, Stowage and Seamanship Part 1, English, Maritime History and Human Factors. The following are the practicals, Applied Science Lab, Computer Lab, Workshop Practicals and Seamanship Lab. We also visited a ship in JNPT Terminal. It was a container vessel. YM Success Different extracurricular activities were also there like we had Toastmasters Club after first semester means after you complete the IMU board exam of first semester and before the vacation of about two weeks at home. We did the STCW courses in EMA. STCW stands for Standards of Trading, Certification and Watchkeeping. STCW came into force in 1978 as governments agreed to standardize training around the world. STCW Basic Safety Training as it is known today is required by all seafarers who are working on board ships. If you are seeking an employment on a cargo ship, ferry, cruise ship or super yacht, you are required to complete STCW basic safety training course. The first international training requirements for merchant ships were introduced in 1978. This was part of a scheme by the IMO, International Maritime Organization, to standardize maritime training across the world. Before 1978, individual governments decided the standards without consulting other countries. As a result, training practices and procedures varied from country to country. And with shipping being a global industry, one country would not accept another's training standards. This led to ships being delayed in port, lots of red tape and political arguments between nations. The main purpose of the convention is to promote safety of life and property at sea and the protection of marine environment. STCW basic safety training consisted of the following courses. Firefighting and fire prevention FPFF Personal Safety and Social Responsibility PSSR Personal Survival Techniques PST Elementary First Aid EFA Security Training for Seafarers with Designated Security Duties STSDSD After completing the courses, we came back to our homes for the semester break. It was about two weeks after returning back the next part of the course, the semester two. It comprised of the following subjects. Navigation Part 3 Terrestrial, Coastal and Celestial Navigation Navigation Part 4 Advanced Bridge Equipment, Watchkeeping and Meteorology Cargo Handling, Stowage and Seamanship Part 2 Ship Construction and Ship Stability Part 2 Marpol and Marine Engineering Knowledge Emergencies, Maritime Communication and Commercial Shipping Knowledge For the practicals in the second semester, we had Communicative English Lab Navigation Lab, Workshop and Seamanship Lab. We had another ship visit and it was a cement carrier, Dane Nari. From both ship visits, we got some idea on what we will have to experience and expect. In the meantime, from the college only, they applied for Indian CDC, Continuous Discharge Certificate. It is a seafarer's identity document issued by his country. Every seafarer must carry this document while on board, which is also an official and legal record of his sea experience. INDOS number stands for Indian National Database of Seafarers. A complete INDOS number includes a seafarer's full name, address, photograph, signature, telephone number, qualification, etc. It is made of eight alphanumeric characters and can provide as a means to cross-check seafarer's identity. All existing and fresh seafarers need to have INDOS number. The training institutes will apply online for the INDOS number for pre-sea cadets. And you have to complete the hepatitis B vaccination prior joining the vessel. First dose I took it before joining the college and the second dose I took when I was in the college. Some additional courses including oil tanker, 
familiarization course, Agdis familiarization, navigation lab, gas tanker familiarization course were also conducted. After finishing the course, home sweet home. Now we have to prepare for joining. As we receive CDC by postal, the joining procedures get started. Ensure your documents, mainly passport, is correct. Documentation is a great process. If you can get it done faster, you can join the vessel easily. For me, after the DNS course, in two months, I joined the vessel. So for that, you have to be quick with your documents. You have to take Maritime Union card along with the yellow fever vaccination for getting the international certificate of vaccine against yellow fever. Medicals to be cleared prior joining the vessel. I already discussed about the medicals in the previous videos. I'll put the link for that video in the description box. So act fast after the academics. Stay tuned for more videos.